Welcome to another episode of Branding Bloopers, a series where we have open, transparent discussions about the mistakes we make while building our brands so that others can learn from it. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking to a pioneer, an innovator, a real trendsetter in the digital space. It's my good friend, Africa Allah, who hails from the beautiful islands of Bahamas, but she's very well-traveled, very cultured, could give us perspectives from all different kinds of music, genres of music, cultures, etc. So please help me to welcome the one, the only, Africa Allah. Yeah, yeah. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much, Marissa, for having me on To Be Caribbean. I'm so excited about this particular topic. Nice, nice. So let's jump right in. So for those people who may not know, tell us about your brand in less than a minute. All right, so I run Distinctive Impression Multimedia Group and Distinctive Impression Multimedia Group is a new media company created to support small businesses, entrepreneurs, creatives, and artists alike in the digital space. Uh, we focus on the creation and development of media house on digital platforms, being audio, video, photography, and of course, journalism. Right. And um, our number one philosophy is everything has a distinctive story and the digital space allows you an opportunity to connect and find your tribe. Mm, I love that. I love that. Leveraging digital, find your tribe, make sure your brand stands out and is distinctive. I love it. Right. So on that tip, like, let's talk about bloopers, right? Because that's what this is about. Right. So we all know it's a struggle to build a brand and a digital footprint is one of the most effective ways to build a strong brand. So tell us in your experience, what has been one of your biggest branding bloopers while building your brand? I think early on now, keep in mind, we started about 15 years ago. We just celebrated 15 years in business. Um, oh, nice. And when we started, the first thing that we did, the, the biggest mistake that we've ever made was building our product on a third party. And we did that twice. Mm, so okay. imagine coming into a situation and you're doing like 1.2 million a week, mm. right? And then you wake up one day and there's nobody. Wow. Because the third party back then, you know, 15 years ago, the FCC didn't mandate it that, that um, companies told their users that they were leaving or planning on shutting down. Mm. So if they decided that they wanted to shut down, you know, they'd be here tomorrow, today and going tomorrow. Right. Um, and a lot of the security in the digital space didn't come until probably about 2010. Damn. So okay. we didn't see any real security in the digital space with third parties until then. Mm -hmm. So um, our first our first platform, one morning somebody was like, "Oh, I went to the I went to the thing, but you're not there." I'm like, "What are you talking about? You probably <laughs> the wrong thing," and it was gone. And I tell you, know, like, I was so proud of my numbers because every day, every every day I would go and I would print out these color presentations with all of these numbers and graphs, like look at where we're doing and whatever the case may be. Now, was this it was like a, a website? Yes, it was a website. It was, okay. a, it was a third party, like a like a SoundCloud or uh. a MySpace or something like that. But it was a third party that at that time they were the only platform that. Um, house and made possible for you to do podcasting. Okay, so okay. although we are a new media company, um, our primary product since the inception of time has been podcasting. Cause I come from a radio back, a radio and TV background. Right. So it only made sense for me to be able to deliver this content through audio, through audio, which mm -hmm. at the time was a new, was a new thing. Right. And um, we did that the first year. And then the second year, we found another third party. And then later on in the year, that third party decided, they, they gave us a heads up. They decided that they were going to go to video. Mm. But at that time, there weren't platforms outside of, and YouTube had just started. Okay. So there weren't platforms outside of that that, that could have um, supported uh, 
hour and a half radio show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in order to do video, you know, of course, a video, a video at that time, we were only doing 10 minute intervals mm -hmm. of video. Wow. It seems like, it seems like, it seems like so far with so long ago, you know, <laughs> like 10 minutes, that's all you get to do. But that was when, when you could start it, you could only do 10 minute intervals of, mm -hmm. um, of video. That was the longest format that they had allowed. Mm -hmm. So that was our biggest, that was our biggest blooper in regards to our digital brand right we got it right the third time around we decided to invest in hosting mm -hmm. and be able to control our content so no matter what happened with our third party because you still have distribution you know still like um the record labels and stuff you have somebody that distributes the content to all of the platforms but we were able to house our content and be and be able to build our brand identity on our own platforms. And mm -hmm. one of the biggest, one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of a lot of creatives do still to this day is they build a brand on soil that they're not that they don't own mm -hmm. or they're leasing. So that's one of the biggest bloopers. And I mean, we learned from it. We paid for it. And we are still trying to get back to the level that we were at when we first started in 2005. Wow. That's that's a hell of a lesson for sure. But one of my key takeaways is ownership is key, especially okay. in the digital space. You know, like oh. you, you have to own your stuff. So I guess building on that concept, like thinking about our audience, Caribbean creatives, and that's like music, dance, anything creative, we try to help them build their brands. Right. What would be advice you would give them in terms of owning a space, having a strong digital footprint so that they could build their brand identity? Um, my, my advice to you first and foremost is purchase, invest. Mm -hmm. Invest in a hosting platform and a domain so that you can build and develop your brand. Now, one of the things, you know, that I've found with the Caribbean, with Caribbean creatives and Caribbean products is that we tend to build our platforms on other people's platforms because we want accessibility. Right. But Nothing in this world, and your mama always tell you this, nothing in this world come free. Free, right. <laughs> so at some point, you are either giving up your intellectual property rights mm. or you're giving up the freedom to promote and to develop your product the way you want to because you have to adhere to all of the stipulations and or algorithms that come with these platforms. Mm -hmm. Additionally, they can use your products and in the, in the the reality is most of us don't read the terms and agreements right and so when you start looking into the terms and agreements you start finding out that they can market and use your products and your likeness at any given time to market and promote their products because you're on their platform for free but mm -hmm. you have to get something um so that's my biggest thing and outside of that i did have some things that i wanted to say in regards to branding Mm -hmm. There are five things that you should always think of when you're branding outside of owning, outside of owning your name and your platform, mm -hmm. you should, you should make sure that you think about your position. That's the purpose behind, um, creating appealing images that leverage the brand's unique strengths. Mm -hmm. You should also think about the promise, you know, the value or experience a company's customers expect to receive every time that they visit your product or engage with you online. Right. Um, your personality, mm -hmm. a set of human characteristics that attribute to your brand and the, your brand's name. Mm -hmm. And then of course your story, you know, the why is so much more interesting. Mm -hmm. People are always like, oh, well, we started it. No, nobody cares about that. They mm -hmm. want to know why. Right, right. You know, start with the why and tell the story. Make it something that people can relate to and they gravitate towards. And the last thing is brand association and consistency. 
-hmm. It doesn't matter what you do. If you are not consistent mm -hmm. with your product, you will not be successful. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you say that you're going to do something, every, if you say that you're going to do something every week, then you need to deliver every week. If something arises that you won't be able to, to, to deliver that product to your clients and or to your users, you need to make it, you need to make a post letting them know that you will, you will come back the following week or you will come on a different date, but you have to have continuous communication with your users. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing is of course, experience, right? Experience is the number one thing that helps develop and build a brand. Every great experience starts with discovery, exploration, and sharing. Mm. And that's basically it, you know. Whoa, a word, a word. Thank you for that. That was some good information for real. And you know, as I as you were talking and I was thinking through number one lessons for myself, um, but I was trying to do a practical example of owning your platform, right? Owning your digital space. So I was thinking like for me, like with my website, I use WordPress um, and you know, that's my domain and I host there, et cetera, et cetera. What would it look like for, for someone like me to own, own that? Like, do I have to build a platform? Um, no, no, using third party platform, using third party applications to build your site uh, is one thing. Uh -huh. that's, a, that's an application. Now, if you're on the wordpress.com mm -hmm. and you're using that, then I would suggest that you take that and go over to GoDaddy, which is one of the best platforms to host it, and go to GoDaddy, purchase you, uh, purchase your hosting plan, mm -hmm. transfer it over or port over your domain name mm -hmm. and transfer all of your content over there. The, uh, um, mm -hmm. the reason being is because when you're on third party platforms, what they tend to do as you start to grow, everything is a la carte. Right. So what happens is you end up spending more money than you would spend if you went and built out your product outright on a platform that you owned. Mm -hmm. Because you're spending one set of money, you're spending one set of money once a year, or if you choose to break it down in, week, in um, monthly payments, your monthly payments are definitely gonna be less than your a la carte your a la carte payments because it sounds cool when you're like oh it's only five dollars but it's end up being five dollars a month for 24 months 36 months 52 months however long you decide to have that platform then you have whatever hosting which is a month which is a monthly process right and then you might say oh i want to start selling stuff so then here's another here's another thing that you're adding on and before you know it you're spending upwards of $50 a month and you don't even know when that happened. Right. Where I you can do the same thing on a platform and you can spend anywhere between $200 to $400 a year and you cover all of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can expand as you decide to go on. Right. So if you want to try something here or you want to introduce paywalls or something like that, you have the opportunity to experiment on mm -hmm. your own time without having to spend additional money outside of whatever licenses are required gotcha okay 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 that's good to know i need to i was making some notes while you were talking good stuff good stuff and then of course the the four p's well five p's that you shared you know like paid lots of money to learn that in grad school so thank you there's a lot of good <laughs> free information here <laughs> Right. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. And um mm -hmm. there is one thing that I want I want to, to people to keep in mind. It doesn't matter how beautiful your website is, mm -hmm. if your website isn't ranking or isn't being tracked, then you can't see the progression of if you can't see the progression of your product. Right. One. And two you can't show potential investors and or sponsors the value of your product. Like um, over the holiday season, I found out that we were ranking number 12 in the Bahamas. We were at number 12 in the Bahamas. 
And when I looked, when I went and did the, did more research, I found out that there were no Bahamian companies in the top 50. Wow. We were ranking number 12 over media houses, government entities, government entities and hotels. Mm. Now that's absurd. Right, right. <laughs> but, and there was no other Bahamian company until I think you got to about a hundred, you started seeing Bahamian companies. So that just tells you that that, that now makes us valuable to a potential, to a potential sponsor or investor, because we're sitting at, we're sitting at number 12 in rank in this particular region. Now there are only 23, there are only 23 million people throughout the Caribbean. So when you start talking about Caribbean product and, um, serving Caribbean communities, you now have to figure out where are you serving, who is your target location and what is your niche location. So it's a whole bunch of things that go into it. Yeah. And, you know. <laughs> Real talk. Okay. So you and I are going to talk after, cause I want to learn about this ranking and tracking and all that. Cause yeah, outside my lane for sure. But <laughs> this was so much wonderful information. So Africa, let's say people want to work with you and, you know, get some more information from you. How, how do they contact you? Well, Playmass.today is everywhere on the internet. Playmass.today, Playmass.today, Playmass.today. Or you can check out our new product, which is digitalbrand.coach. That's digitalbrand.coach. And that is for you to define your success and help you get the tools you need to do it yourself. Because we realize that people, you know, we're in a time where people really can't afford to do a lot of things, but everybody, you know, we should be striving to be self-sufficient. So we want to give you the tools to be self-sufficient. So like I said, digitalbrand.coach, that's digitalbrand.coach. And I love these new dots because right. you find <laughs> who you are, you know what I mean? Right. Um, but digitalbrand.coach is where you can find us if you want to do any of the information in regards to education and support for your media products. Okay, okay. Uh, well, as I said, you're going to be hearing from me for sure. But Africa, truly, truly appreciate your time, your insights, sharing your bloopers, being transparent about it. You know, I think there's a lot that Caribbean creators could learn from this conversation. And I hope a lot of people follow up with you because I think it's a space we definitely need to explore some more as a community and as a region, you know? So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. This was another episode of Branding Bloopers. Today, our guest was Africa Ala. We're talking about having a digital footprint, making sure you have a brand identity, a brand presence in the digital space. Make sure you check her out. Thank you. I'm Marissa, host of To Be Caribbean Branding Bloopers. Yeah, yeah.